Well, we left at the entirety of December when it was below minus 10 and we've managed to get away with it. It's January and it's only minus five overnight. And we're gonna try and put the floor on, put the seats on and really make some good progress this weekend. But first, there's something we need to deal with. So a few episodes ago, you might remember us putting in the window in the firewall, and we also promised to mount up our expansion tank. Now, we have failed and have delivered on that. We have got the thing mounted up, all the brackets and everything are in place, but we couldn't plumb it until the engine was in, and the engine took a while to get in. There was a whole bunch of drama around that. But now that it's all together, and also now that we're moving on to some other work in the same sort of vicinity, we do need to get this plumbed. So this is going to happen right now. And conveniently, the car is also on a good rake, which gets you a good view into it because we're working on the floor, which you'll see in a second. Now, as you've seen a few times on the show now, this sits down into the bracket. There's a big pin on the bottom that locates it. Two screws on the back anchor it in place, and that's all good, mechanically at least. For the plumbing, the hose outlet here is kind of in the same area as the boost pipe into the intake manifold. So before we can figure out exactly where the... Um, with a where the hose goes there we need to rebuild some of our intake system now i think this yeah this is the uh, the final hose here and this one comes up out of the second intercooler and into the intake manifold just around here so we're going to get that back together and then we can put the expansion tank on and then we can plumb it and once that's done and that's uh, all together then we can put our air filter and the final bits of intake plumbing on here which completes all of our boost system at last when we built the splitter, we had to put on a couple extra pieces of the floor, namely this one and another one that sits underneath the rack, which we've already taken off. You might see that they're missing under there. And the reason we had to put those on was to make sure that everything sat nicely and joined up properly between the back of the splitter and the front of the rest of the floor. Now, I made a critical mistake when I did that, and I left some of the edges of this piece open to the elements. Now, although this is phenolic ply, I wasn't fully convinced how well it was going to stand up because I've tried marine ply on this before, which definitely doesn't have the same level of protection, and that didn't end so well. This is the previous panel. This is the previous panel that we had on, and you can see it has warped really badly. This is 12 mil marine ply, uh, which was painted and then varnished um, and then put onto the bottom of the car and that was in summer and it didn't even survive the rain through the summer and the autumn before it all started warping and I knew I was going to have to replace it. So that was why I ended up getting a couple of sheets of phenolic ply and recut all of the panels and I'm really pleased to say that this has actually survived incredibly well. You can see at this end where it was left open to the elements, I've knocked a little bit off there, but where it's open to the elements it really hasn't delaminated at all. Now the spec for this sh says it should survive something like four hours in boiling water before it delaminates and the glue or the, the, um, the resin actually starts to break down. So underneath here should have been fine but I wasn't convinced based on my experience with the marine ply but actually this is perfectly fine I'm gonna seal up the ends put this one back on and actually add all of the floor back on the car but before we do that we do have to put the seats in so we'll get that done next and then finish off the floor Well, that took quite a lot longer than I expected. You might be able to see even that we're losing a bit of light now. Uh, but we've been through our big box of like water hoses and coolant lines and everything, uh, taken all of this and filtered through it to find all the bits that we needed. And we have made da -da 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 -da, this one here, which comes down off of, the, uh, off of the expansion tank, sneaks in underneath our intake pipe and then clamps on with a little bolt onto the framework here. So this is a little piece of what was left of our MGTF coolant lines that we had. Uh, we've heated and bent this round to change the angle on it a bit so that it fits better. We've also made up a little uh, metal bracket and arm that fits on over the frame there. So this is the sort of trickier part. This has taken sort of bits from a whole bunch of different pieces of hose that we've had to dismantle and uh, has done the hard part. Now we just need to do the elbow around the end onto the uh, second piece of pipe where it joins the engine at this end, which is hopefully the easy part. This is every bit as fiddly as I've come to expect of this car.
At least it went all the way through. Yeah, of course, it's in the middle of the car. <laughs> Every time you use one of those things, that's the risk that you're running. Did you hear where it went? Oh, okay. Probably never to take that off again. Ever. Just, no. It's not happening. You know what's worse? I've got a paint bracket. <sighs> I just... That, that is that is future problem. It works. It's, it's good enough for t right now. So Chris has volunteered himself to get back under the car and put the two panels on that we took off earlier. As you can see, these have all been cleaned up around the edge with some black paint, which obviously won't do much, but they've then been lacquered with two coats of the same stuff we've used on the paintwork, and they are nice and sealed. So these need to fit back on underneath first, and then we can start working on ones further back down the car. There is a very slim chance that the ones further down the car may not fit now. I'm really hoping that's not the case. Um, we didn't change anything on this panel that Chris is fitting at the moment, which is kind of underneath the rack and the uh, radiator duct. So if they fit before, they should fit again. But I can't honestly remember the last time I had these on the car. I'm fairly certain we had these lips in, but we'll see, well, hopefully in about 10 minutes once we've got this one in. Third time's the charm. Are these seriously in the wrong place? I'm going to be deeply upset if they are. Well, 10 minutes later, we did in fact discover that that panel did not fit. And about 20 minutes after that, it still didn't fit after we'd cut a bit off and we'd re-drilled some holes. And about 40 minutes later, we also found that the other side had exactly the same problem. So instead of being 10 minutes, it was about an hour and a half, and by that point, it was extremely cold, it was below zero again, and we'd had enough. So this morning, we're gonna fit the last panel, but before we do that, we've gotta put the seats in. And we've already taken the ice out from the seats yesterday. Fortunately, there was no rain, so there's no more ice in them, but they do need a bit of a clean. So we're gonna bolt those in while the drill charges, because we also have to drill out all of these holes to make them just a little bit easier to locate the bolts through, because, I don't know how things have moved, but it really feels like things have moved. It's finally time to put the seats back in. Now, for one reason or another, we've managed to lose all of the original bolts that we were using to hold these into the floor, which is kind of fine because they were M6, they were a little bit spindly, and they were never going to be fine for going out on the road. They just wouldn't hold the seats in securely enough. So we've prepared up or slightly modified some of, some of the M8 bolts out of the uh, TT that we've salvaged. We've ground the sides off so that when they sit in the runners, they don't actually rotate, so they're kind of self-anchoring in place in the runners. And being M8s rather than 6s, they'll be a lot stronger, a lot more sturdy, and they'll hold the seats in place a lot better in the event of a crash. There are a few other changes we're going to make for safety. We're also going to sleeve the little half-inch box sections, but we don't have the bits for that right now, so that's going to happen later on. just want to say that this isn't all of the upgrades we're doing for safety. It's just uh, what we're doing today. Last thing you have to do before we can put the last panel of floor on is cut these bolts down. They're a little bit long and they come down into where the floor has to go, so I'm just going to cut them a bit shorter and give us that room that we need. It's going to get quite loud now, I think. And now, genuinely a day later than I thought it was going to happen, this is the last piece of floor that we have made, which we can slide under the car. Chris is already under. This is just going to turn around, go all the way underneath, and bolt in. And if it does, I will be thrilled. Whether or not it will is still up for debate. The floor is done. Well, most of it, at least. Okay, all of the floor that we've previously fitted to the car is done. Yeah. And there are two major problems stopping us from fitting the other pieces of floor that we have. One 
is we've run out of bolts. Yeah, we've either lost them or scavenged them to use elsewhere yes. on the car. I think, to be fair, the dashboard is mostly held together with what used to be floor bolts. Yeah, I've gone through a lot of bolts where I've got a big tub of all of the floor bolts that I pulled them off. They've got all the washers on. All the washers yeah. are in there, so we have a surplus of washers, but we're out of bolts because I've basically gone, oh, I've got loads of these in the drawer. And yeah, we yeah. haven't. I've and it's a weekend, more. so we can't get more. The yeah. other problem is that the drill batteries are all a bit like this. They are really, They're all a bit dead. They are really not enjoying the cold. They're not yeah. charging well because of the cold, and they're also old, so yeah. they are dying. That is the last good battery. Now, bearing in mind, I have six of these. Three of them don't even charge. You charge them up, it goes, yeah, they're charged. You put them on, they don't turn it. The other two charge and run the drill like that. So, yeah, we're down to one, and we have exhausted it for the day. Yeah. And it's, the sun is going down. We've got maybe half an hour of light left. And I am beat. Yeah, there is more that we were hoping to squeeze into this episode yeah. before I leave again back for Wales. But unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, this has just taken so much longer than we expected it to. The amount of finagling and adjustment that we've had yeah. to do. And in fairness, it wouldn't have taken a huge amount of time if we had, bless it, if we had a healthy drill yeah. with healthy batteries. But yeah, as you said, the batteries are old. They don't one. hold much. But the problem is the mains one doesn't fit under the yes, car it's on too the long. jacks. It's too yeah. long to fit in to actually do anything. Yeah. So, so we're limited to that drill because it is quite low profile yeah. in so we've, fairness. We've been really, really bottlenecked by how fast we can get charge into these dead old nickel cadmium yeah. batteries. And we're so if, genuinely a day behind yeah. where I expected us to be because I was really hoping that these three panels that fit in the middle of the car would just go bunk and drop back in because I've yeah. had them on before and I don't know why they no longer fit. Yeah, so if you want to buy us some new drills and new batteries, <laughs> yes. jump on patreon.com yeah. forward slash Pedalbox Show. Just bolts. Yeah, well, just bolts would be yeah, fine. Just yeah. bolts. You can you can support us at patreon.com forward slash Pedalbox Show and you can buy us some M5 by 20 mil bolts and we can finish this off. And yeah. if you do go to there, you can also get discount on merch, which we are both wearing for a change. Yeah. You'll get a discount tiered to the level effectively. So if you're a $10 patron, basically you'll get a 10% 10, 10 discount on the merch store. Uh, and if you haven't already, you should definitely subscribe to the channel so you'll get notified immediately, assuming you hit the little bell, of more of our suffering. In the meantime... <laughs> I mean, hopefully this is the last of our suffering. This is the worst God, part of the car. I hope so. Yeah. And we are doing it at the worst time of the year where yeah. we have to lie on the, the ground. The ground is basically frozen. We checked, it is actually freezing yeah. and we've been lying on it for about four hours. Yeah. So, uh, thanks very much for watching. <laughs> if you've got this far, well done. Thank you. Um, we will see you in the next episode when I promise we will actually fit the intake um, because we might get that done before you go back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If we're maybe. really, really lucky, we're going to jump on CAD tonight, see if we can model yeah. it up and get it printed on the old uh, 3D yeah. printer overnight. We've got to fit it and then print some brackets. So yeah. We might try fitting it, but either way, thanks very much for watching. We will see you next time. Goodbye.